An aircraft carrier is not just a massive ship. It's a city at sea with thousands of people living, working, and sleeping on board for months. Life on board an aircraft carrier is undoubtedly arduous and exhausting, but it can also be thrilling, especially for the men and women who work on the flight deck, flying and landing jets on a sliver of a runway. An aircraft carrier is a ship with a flight deck, which serves as a runway for the aircraft. These ships are massive, with a length of over 1,000 feet and a displacement of over 100,000 tons. They're powered by nuclear reactors, which give them the ability to travel at speeds of more than 35 knots, or 40 miles an hour, allowing them to cross the ocean in just weeks. These ships are so powerful that they can launch or land a plane every 25 seconds when fully operational, taking up a fraction of the space needed on a standard landing strip. The carrier is the most powerful asset any Navy can have. They're often stationed in carrier groups around the world, ready to deploy at a moment's notice. The size of a supercarrier is awe-inspiring, but it's the activity on the flight deck that's the most exciting. But how do these ships work in the middle of the ocean? The answer lies in their ability to generate power through their nuclear reactors, which can run for years without refueling. This power drives the ship's engines, which propel it forward at incredible speeds, allowing it to travel across vast distances with ease. The carrier's crew is responsible for maintaining and operating every aspect of the ship, from the engines to the weapon systems to the aircraft themselves. The ship's company ensures that all aspects of the carrier work properly, from cleaning the dishes and cooking meals to managing weaponry and maintaining the nuclear reactors. The air wing is responsible for flying and repairing the aircraft on board. These aircraft are some of the most advanced and deadly in the world, including fighter jets, attack helicopters and surveillance planes. Life on board an aircraft carrier is not easy. Conditions are cramped, with personnel having to navigate tight hallways and steep staircases to get from one part of the ship to another. Despite the cramped conditions, the carrier has everything its passengers need to live comfortably. Their various galleys or kitchens and mess halls that serve up to 18,000 meals every day. The ship also contains a large laundry facility, doctors and dentist offices, a variety of businesses and a bank of satellite telephones for staff to communicate with their family. One of the most crucial shops on an aircraft carrier is the ship's store. The store offers a variety of items including toiletries, clothing and electronics. Sailors can purchase snacks, drinks and other essentials as well as souvenirs and gifts for their loved ones back home. Prices at the store are comparable to those on land and sailors can pay with cash or credit. Another important shop is the barber shop. Sailors can get their hair cut and styled as well as receive other grooming services like shaves and beard trims. The barber shop is often a social hub on board with sailors gathering to chat and catch up while waiting their turn in the chair. And believe it or not, some aircraft carriers have a Starbucks on board. The same Starbucks that you visit for your morning coffee is available to sailors at sea. The US Navy has partnered with Starbucks to bring the taste of home to sailors who are stationed on carriers for extended periods. The Starbucks on an aircraft carrier operates much like a regular Starbucks. It's staffed by sailors who are trained by Starbucks and serve up all your favorite drinks from lattes to frappuccinos just like they would on land. The Starbucks on an aircraft carrier is not just a place to grab a cup of coffee. It's a place for sailors to relax and unwind. What's more, the Starbucks on an aircraft carrier is often used for other purposes as well. It serves as a gathering spot for meetings and social events, and it sometimes is used for a classroom for training and education. The shop provides a much needed break from the routine of daily life on board and helps sailors maintain a sense of normalcy while serving their country. Sailors do not have to pay for their own groceries when they shop on board. The Navy provides the sailors with a basic allowance for subsistence BAS, which covers their food costs. The BAS is a non-taxable allowance that is used to provide food for enlisted personnel and officers. The price in the ship's store are generally comparable to those on shore, and sailors can use their Navy Exchange Card to make purchases. The Navy Exchange Card is a chain of retail stores that are operated by the Navy Exchange Service Command, or NEXCOM, and are found on most U.S. Navy installations worldwide. 
The next stores provide the sailors with a range of products, including electronics, clothing, and other household items. The Nexcom operates the Nex stores, and the profits generated from the sales are reinvested in the stores, which helps to keep prices low for the sailors. In addition to the ship store, the sailors also have access to the ship's galley, where they can have their meals. The galley on an aircraft carrier is the heart of the ship. It's a bustling hive of activity that operates 24 hours a day, serving up to 18,000 meals a day to the crew of the ship. The galley is one of the most essential and critical parts of an aircraft carrier because feeding thousands of people at sea is no easy feat. The galley is an enormous kitchen spanning several decks on the ship. It's equipped with a variety of ovens, fryers, grills, and other cooking equipment to prepare an array of meals. The galley is staffed by over a hundred sailors, many of whom have specialized training in culinary arts. The galley is open all day, every day, so sailors can grab a meal whenever they have a free moment. Meals are served in shifts to ensure that the crew is fed throughout the day. The food is always fresh and the menu changes every day to provide a variety for the crew. To ensure the freshness of the food, the galley receives regular resupply missions from other ships. This resupply mission is known as an underway replenishment, where a supply ship meets the aircraft carrier at sea to provide food, fuel, and other essential supplies. This enables the galley to serve up fresh meals daily, even on extended missions. The galley is divided into various sections, each with a specific responsibility. There's a bakery section where fresh bread and pastries are made every day. The salad section provides fresh greens and toppings, while the entree section is responsible for the hot dishes. The dessert section is where the sweets and the treats are prepared. Meals are served buffet style, with sailors able to help themselves to a wide range of dishes. The galley provides plenty of options, from classic American dishes like hamburgers and hot dogs to international cuisine like sushi and stir-fry. There's always something for everyone. The galley also caters to sailors with specific dietary requirements. For example, sailors who are vegetarian or have food allergies can request special meals, which the galley will prepare to meet their needs. This ensures that everyone on board the ship is well-fed and healthy. The galley is an essential part of life on an aircraft carrier, and the hard-working sailors who staff it are critical to the success of the ship's mission. They work tirelessly to ensure that everyone on board is well-fed and healthy, no matter how long the mission lasts. Before we go any further, I'm curious to know if you have as much respect for the men and women of the U.S. Navy. Like this video to express your respect and thank them for their service, or leave a blue heart below this video. Let's move on. How will the ship be resupplied in the middle of the sea if it's on a mission for months? The process of resupplying an aircraft carrier in the middle of the sea is a carefully planned and choreographed operation. In many cases, the aircraft carrier is accompanied by a fleet of supply ships, which are tasked with the crucial responsibility of keeping the aircraft carrier operational. The resupply process is carried out using an ingenious system known as the underway replenishment. This system involves supply ships coming alongside the aircraft carrier while both vessels are still in motion. The two vessels are then connected using a series of cables, lines, and hoses, which are used to transfer supplies, fuel, and ammunition from the supply ship to the aircraft carrier. The process of transferring fuel is particularly delicate, as it involves transferring large amounts of volatile and combustible materials from one vessel to another. To ensure safety, the supply ships are equipped with a series of safety measures, including spill containment systems, fire suppression equipment, and other safety gear. The process of resupplying an aircraft carrier is carried out by a team of sailors who are specially trained in underway replenishment. These sailors are responsible for ensuring that the transfer of supplies and fuel is carried out quickly and efficiently, minimizing the amount of time that the aircraft carrier spends alongside the supply ship. The process of resupplying an aircraft carrier is not without its challenges. The high seas can be unpredictable, with rough weather and high waves making it difficult to carry out the transfer of supplies and fuel. Additionally, the process of transferring large amounts of material from one vessel to another requires a high degree of coordination and skill. A single mistake can have catastrophic consequences. Let's go to the flight deck. The flight deck of an aircraft carrier is the nerve center of the ship, where the aircraft take off and land. It's a carefully choreographed dance that requires precision, communication, and trust between pilots, air traffic controllers, and sailors. 
In this part of the video, we're going to take a closer look at how aircraft take off and land on an aircraft carrier's flight deck. The flight deck is the only place on the carrier where planes can take off and land. It's an incredibly busy, noisy, and dangerous place, with planes taxiing, taking off, and landing all around you. Sailors working on the flight deck wear brightly colored vests to help pilots identify them and avoid accidents. One of the most exciting and nerve-wracking moments on the flight deck is the launch of an aircraft from the catapult. The catapult is a steam-powered system that uses a piston to propel the plane down the flight deck and into the air. The launch is incredibly powerful, and the pilots experience up to 3 Gs of acceleration. The catapult is carefully calibrated to launch each plane based on its weight, speed, and the wind conditions. After takeoffs, planes circle around the carrier and then head out on their mission. When it's time to return, the pilots must line up their planes with the carrier's flight deck and prepare for landing. Landing on an aircraft carrier is one of the most challenging maneuvers a pilot can make. The deck is only 300 feet long, and planes must be stopped in just a few hundred feet to avoid crashing into the ocean. To land, pilots approach the carrier at an angle and fly just above the flight deck. They then catch a wire with a hook on the back of their plane, which stops the plane in just a few hundred feet. The pilots must aim their hooks at the wire that's only a few inches off the deck and snag it perfectly. It's a skill that takes years to master, and pilots must practice hundreds of times before they're ready to land on a carrier. The landing area on the carrier is called the meatball, and it's an optical landing system that helps pilots line up their planes with the flight deck. The meatball is a series of lights that the pilot uses to gauge their position relative to the deck. The pilot must keep the meatball lined up with a series of green lights to ensure a safe landing. Sailors on the flight deck have to work fast to prepare the planes for takeoff and landing. They use colored paddles to signal the pilots, guide the planes into position, and attach and detach the planes from the catapult and the wires. It's a dangerous job, and sailors must remain focused and alert at all times. One of the most impressive sights on an aircraft carrier is the flight ops period, when planes are taking off and landing around the clock. During flight ops, the carrier's flight deck is a non-stop whirlwind of activity. Planes are launched and landed every few minutes, and sailors work around the clock to keep the planes fueled, armed, and ready for action. In this fast-paced and potentially dangerous environment, clear and efficient communication is essential to the safe operation of the aircraft. To prevent accidents and ensure the safe launch and recovery of aircraft, the U.S. Navy has developed a set of standardized hand signals that all personnel must learn and follow. There are a variety of hand signals used on the flight deck, each with a specific meaning. The hand signals used on the flight deck are not just limited to aircraft operations, though. Personnel also use hand signals to communicate with each other when moving support equipment, positioning chocks and chains, and when conducting routine maintenance on the aircraft. On the flight deck, sailors wear a unique set of jerseys that help identify their roles and responsibilities. Each jersey color represents a different job or function, allowing everyone to quickly identify who is who. A yellow jersey, also known as the shooter jersey, is worn by the aircraft handling officer, or the ACHO, who's responsible for directing the movement of the aircraft on the flight deck. The ACHO is also responsible for the catapults, which are used to launch the aircraft from the carrier. The yellow jersey is also worn by the catapult crew and the arresting gear crew. The green jersey is worn by aircraft handlers, who are responsible for moving the aircraft around the flight deck. They use hand signals to communicate with the pilots and the ACHO to ensure safe and efficient operations. The purple jersey is worn by the fueling crew, who refuel the aircraft on the flight deck. The fueling crew is responsible for connecting the fuel hose to the aircraft and monitoring the fuel levels during the process. A white jersey is worn by the safety observer, who monitors the flight deck for any safety hazards. Each of these jerseys serves an essential function on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier, and their unique colors help to quickly identify who's who. The different colors of the jerseys also help to create a sense of unity and teamwork among the sailors working on the flight deck. By working together and communicating effectively, they can safely launch and recover aircraft and maintain a high level of readiness at all times. The hangar bay is where planes and helicopters are maintained, repaired, and prepared for deployment. It's a massive enclosed space beneath the flight deck, spanning almost the entire length of the ship. With more than four acres of space, it's one of the most extensive and well-equipped aircraft hangars in the world. 
The hangar bay is home to the carrier's air wing, which is a team of aircraft, pilots, and support personnel that operate and maintain the carrier's planes and helicopters. The air wing usually consists of up to 90 aircraft, which includes F-A-18 Super Hornets, E-2C Hawkeyes, and MH-60RS Seahawk helicopters. The hangar bay also houses many specialized workspaces, including machine shops, tool rooms, and avionics repair stations. These shops are designed to repair and maintain every piece of equipment needed for the air wing, including engines, electronics, and weaponry. In addition to the maintenance work, the hangar bay is used to prepare and store the aircraft for flight operations. The aircraft are towed to the flight deck using a special elevator system. These elevators transport the aircraft between the flight deck and the hangar bay, allowing for the efficient movement of aircraft. The hangar bay is a bustling and hectic environment, with crews working around the clock to keep the carrier's aircraft mission ready. They use advanced technologies and specialized tools to maintain and repair the aircraft, and they're experts in their field. One of the most exciting aspects of the hangar bay is the movement of aircraft using the advanced lift system. These lifts can carry aircraft weighing up to 50,000 pounds, and they move them between the hangar bay and the flight deck using powerful hydraulic systems. These lifts are essential to the carrier's air operations and require precision handling and expert knowledge to operate safely. The hangar bay is one of the most essential components of an aircraft carrier, and its efficiency is critical to the carrier's success. The personnel working in the hangar bay are well-trained and highly skilled, with years of experience maintaining and repairing the carrier's aircraft. They work tirelessly to keep the aircraft in top condition, ensuring the carrier is ready for any mission. The hangar bay is also where the aircraft are loaded with weapons and ammunition. This work is done in a secure environment to ensure the safety of the crew and the carrier. The weapons are loaded onto the aircraft using specialized loading equipment that can accommodate various types of weapons and ammunition. But why are U.S. Navy aircraft carriers almost impossible to sink? The technology used to build these behemoths allows them to withstand an incredible amount of damage while still remaining afloat. One of the reasons why an aircraft carrier is so difficult to sink is their sheer size. With a length of over a thousand feet and a displacement over 100,000 tons, they are massive structures that would require a significant amount of firepower to sink. Additionally, the ships are constructed with multiple layers of armor and advanced materials, including Kevlar, to provide extra protection against enemy attacks. Another key factor that makes aircraft carriers difficult to sink is their advanced defensive systems. These ships are equipped with a variety of weapons and sensors that can detect and engage incoming threats, such as missiles and torpedoes. For example, the USS Gerald R. Ford, the newest aircraft carrier in the U.S. Navy, is equipped with a state-of-the-art defensive system that includes the Rolling Airframe Missile, or RAM, and the Evolved Sea Sparrow Missile, or ESSM, for close-in defense, as well as an electronic warfare system that can disrupt enemy communications and radar. Perhaps the most important factor that makes U.S. Navy aircraft carriers nearly impossible to sink is their ability to rapidly repair damage. These ships have a large crew of skilled technicians and engineers who can quickly assess and repair damage to the ship's hull and other critical systems. In some cases, repairs can be made while the ship is still underway, allowing it to continue its mission without interruption. In addition to the carrier's powerful offensive capabilities, it also has a number of defensive systems to protect itself and its crew. One such system is the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System, or the CIWS which is a rapid-fire, radar-controlled gun that can shoot down incoming missiles and aircraft. The system can fire up to 4,500 rounds a minute and is capable of tracking and engaging multiple targets at once. What do you find to be the most fascinating thing about aircraft carriers? Have you ever seen one in action or ever been aboard one? Let us know in the comments below. Or leave a blue heart in the comments to thank all the crew members for their service. Thank you for watching this video about how U.S. Navy aircraft carriers work. From the high-tech flight deck to the massive hangar bays and the bustling galley, these floating cities at sea are a marvel of engineering and logistics. But we've only just scratched the surface of all the amazing things these ships can do. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel for more exciting content.
and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.